we start with the puzzle. Does a spring stretched by a hanging mass experience a force? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this nothing nerdy video on free body diagrams. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. For IB Physics, you must be able to use the technique of free body diagrams to analyse situations involving forces. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. In the previous video, you were introduced to the idea that forces are always exerted by one body on another. When you are studying the situation of an object experiencing forces, you must identify all of the forces acting on that object, but not the forces which are exerted by it. There is a reliable method for this. Here is a table. To examine the forces it experiences, we draw a free body diagram. There are five stages to drawing the diagram, which will show all the forces acting on the table. First, we draw the object, simply. Now we are going to identify all forces acting on the table. Number two, draw the force vector for the object's weight. It acts from the table's centre of gravity. It is the force of the Earth on the table. You must also decide on the scale for all of the arrows. For example, one centimetre could represent 50 newtons. Three, consider if there are any other action at a distance forces, such as magnetism or electrostatics, acting on the table, and draw them. Here there are none. Four, identify all the places the object touches other objects. Here, this is where the ground is in contact with the table legs and the two objects are resting on the table top. Draw all of these contact forces which act on the table with the correct directions and sizes compared to the scale in which you drew the weight. Here, we simplify by combining the forces of the ground on the four legs into two forces. They are not necessarily the same size as each other because the situation is not completely symmetrical. The lamp and the flowers push down on the table where they touch it. The force we are drawing is the contact force of the lamp on the tabletop, not the weight of the lamp, because that is the force of the earth on the lamp. The lamp pushes harder on the table than the flowers because it has more mass. Lastly, friction acting on the table. There is no motion in this situation and the surfaces are horizontal, so there are no frictional forces acting on the table. So here is the free body diagram of the table, showing all of the forces that act on the table. It is helpful to label them with letters or words, like this. Here is the free body diagram of all of the forces acting on the table with their correct directions and relative sizes. The free body diagram of the flowers would look like this. There are two forces on the flowers, their weight, which is the pull of the earth, on the flowers, and the push of the table, on the flowers. There are other types of forces that may occur in free body diagrams. Tension is the force that pulls in both directions along an object which is being stretched. A squashed object experiences a compression force. When a body is inside a fluid, such as a balloon in air or a fish underwater, it experiences a force pushing it upwards, opposing gravity. This force is called upthrust. The force which pushes upwards to keep flying objects in the air is called lift. It is caused by air moving over the surfaces of the object. When we look at this, diagram with the five forces we can see that there is no reason for the forces all to be the same size as is suggested in answer a and in any case there are three vertical forces so they can't all be equal in size if they're going to balance and secondly the middle force the weight is an action at a distance force whereas the other four which are shown are contact forces and therefore neither b nor d can be correct and that leaves us with C, and it's a free body diagram, and the forces do all act on the ladder. 
The answer to this question is that there is no net force acting on the spring since the stretching requires the downwards weight to be balanced by an equal and opposite force on the spring from the object which holds the other end of it. So there are forces which cause the tension in the spring, but no overall resultant force.